Hey, if you like to shop on Amazon like most everybody, you can help Southgate Media Group out by going to southgatemediagroup.com and look at the top. There's an Amazon link. You can click that, log into your account, and a portion of everything you buy will help support the podcast of Southgate Media. So it's cheap, it's easy, and you're just doing the same thing that you would do anyways. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to the Krypton The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Hey guys, before we get started, I just want to say, if you haven't done so yet, but check out the Aspiring Kryptonian podcast as well as the Last Sons of Krypton podcast, both hosted by friends of ours, a good time in the world of Superman. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, the man of tomorrow, Superman of blue, and with me is Jane. Just Jane. No, I'm just the Superman of red, the man of steel himself, the better of the better, best of the best. Mr. James Cole. Welcome, James. What's up, Tyler? Oh, you know, just hanging. Like, for all those good listeners out here, usually James and I chit-chat before we start, you know, podcasting to get everything set up. We spend about 40 minutes talking about everything under the sun and all the stuff that we're watching that uh, is just comic-esque related about it's crazy how much content is out there. And then we're like, hey, don't we have a podcast to do? Uh, Yeah. But... It's crazy. So good times. Yes, very good times. I'm well, I'm enjoying watching the things I'm enjoying right now. It's it's a good time. It's actually out of it's out of out of DC and some out of comic book and uh, just some different stuff, fantasy, science fiction. I'm enjoying myself. It's it's a good time to you know love this stuff that we do, and we just need all the people who suck and complain about everything under the sun to stop because you know the bubble will burst. Um, so we just got to enjoy what we can now. So speaking of DC, man, it is time to talk about another DC animated movie. And what's funny is I got thinking about this because of just life. We never did a review. Uh, we kind of like quickly mentioned it on, uh, Batman soul of the dragon. <laughs> like we've done every DC movie, but like, We've never done a review on that one just because we just missed the window because of life. And I was like, huh. Wow. All right. So I thought, you know, that was worth mentioning. Um, that's an odd one out. It is a very odd one, though, period. Like, it's another one that was like they just used Batman to sell it. Um, I mean, Batman fits in that realm of hand-to-hand combatants and stuff. Oh, he totally um, does. It just isn't a Batman like, no. and that, and that's the thing is like he's barely in it, and they just use him to sell it. But that's not the movie we're here to talk about. We are here to talk about Justice Society, World War II. And when this one was announced, I was kind of like, okay, because I think sometimes the Justice Society is very hit or miss. Um, I don't know what's your what's your uh. I mean, it probably, I mean, it probably depends on the story you tell, you know, um, I, I don't have a whole lot of, uh, extra history, uh, with the JSA outside of event books, um, as well as, uh, you know, JSA on Smallville, Stargirl, um, uh, Legends, I mean, you know, that's, that's the majority of my uh, of my familiarity with those characters. Yeah, mine's about the same. Um, I, you know, enjoyed the JSA through other, like, books. Especially a lot that the ones that, <clears throat> excuse me, Jeff Johns had written. Uh, just because he loves the characters. He's done a really good job kind of revitalizing them and bringing that all back. I read some of those, but... There was never any JSA characters that just really spoke to me. So I was never like, yeah, the JSA! Um, but this movie looked cool. Like, when we saw it, 
the animation style was the same as the animation style from the Superman Man of Tomorrow. So that got us all talking. We were wondering, will they be connected? Is this some sort of start to a new continuity or is this just some new default animation style because there hasn't been that many movies since the uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War? Yes. I was like, wait, I'm going to say it wrong unless I get James to say it. So good job, James. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. yeah I need See, we've done this for a few years. We can finish each other's sentences once in a while. It happens. It happens. But he's probably looking at me like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> so, and in those movies, like, well, see, we got, what all have, What all did we get? Man of Tomorrow, Soul of the Dragon, this one. Oh, since? Yeah, the, these three. Is that it? No. Well, we got the, the Jason Todd, Death in the Family one. That's kind of like a weird outlierish thing. Yeah. So yeah, we, we yeah. Had, um. So we were like, oh, is this going to be the new style? I mean, Soul of the Dragon wasn't this style, but it was similar-ish. Um. So we're all trying to figure out what's going on, you know. And I would just say this was a. I like the brightness of the style, and the animation I like. Um. Even though at times I feel like they've slowed the animation down. And by saying that in the sense of, um, like, if you go back and watch, like, old Hanna-Barbera cartoons, like old Scooby-Doo on Boomerang, this isn't a plug for Boomerang, but you can have Boomerang. If you watch, a lot of times, the only thing that moves is, like, their mouth and their head, because what they do is they wouldn't animate the rest of it. They would just animate the, the face to have motion. So you're looking, right. So you're looking at a still drawing for longer. And I feel like that's kind of where this animation is a little bit. Like, there are times where there's more stillness to it. Um, and that's not a knock on it. And just, you know, things to Well, you know, I think I think it fits the stories that they are telling. So we go with the two movies of this style, Man of Tomorrow and this, um, which, by the way, uh, are connected because we get the same Superman from Superman, uh, from Man of Tomorrow Hallelujah. in the Praise opening Lord. of this movie and the closing of this movie interacting with uh, our new Flash Praise, uh, voiced Praise be by Matthew Bomer. Praise to the one above. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, I started clapping and Janina looked at me like, what? And she hadn't watched Man of Tomorrow yet. Like, every time we try to watch it with her, like, it's just been busy. But after she watched this with us, um, we're like, okay, we're going to watch it. Because I got excited. It's like, yes, they're building a new continuity. Yeah. Um, so, like you said, the animation being slow, The these two movies, they are not frantic. Um, as we are used to seeing from time to time with... Um, the older animation style and I mean also the high paced action, things like that. Um, they allow the story uh, time to breathe and, and the characters to interact more than just uh, um, and it's, it wasn't every movie before because they've done, they've had great movies uh, mm-hmm. in the animated and the animated universe. But um the the story and the pacing seems more balanced throughout. Yes, I'll agree. Um, I totally agree. So let's let's kind of break this movie down. Let me let me give a quick summary here. Justice Society World War II, released twenty twenty one. The Justice Society of America, a group of heroes aiding. The allies in World War II acquire an ally from the future who sends them on an adventure that changes history. All right, that's a summary. And it stars Stana Katatik, I can never be there. Stana Katik, who was Wonder Woman, who had previously been Lois Lane in Superman Unbound. Matt Bomer as The Flash, Barry Allen, 
formerly Superman in Superman Unbound, and a whole lot of other people that I have heard of and some I haven't. Darren and Chris, once again, a Superman Clark Kent. Chris can never say his last name. Always enjoy his voice acting work. He's Steve Trevor. I just remember him as being Bo in the Avengers movie or the guy who showed us that there are behind-the-scenes people that exist in the office. I have to watch the last season. Yeah, no, barely, barely gotten into the first season so far. First season's rough, I'm telling you. It's weird. It just feels weird. But by get to the second season, you'll understand why so many people love it. But I know it's not fair, so I'm not a not one of them. Um, so, yes, this just recently came out. We're going to drop this on the day of physical release because we always do admire physical release. And we are giving away a digital copy of this. Um, if you're listening to this, go on over to our YouTube channel, search Krypton Report, or follow our link tree, and just subscribe to our YouTube channel. We plan on doing some things over the summer for that, and we're going to start building that up more. And just want to get some more people viewing. So, um, my overview on this film is I like it. I enjoyed it much more uh, the second time. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I have read reviews on IMDb, and it seems like it's very mixed on people liking it a lot or people hating it and thinking it's complete trash. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> holy cow. Like, there's just some vicious people out there. But what, what's your over? Um, I liked it as well. Uh, I like the characters, uh, the voice acting, um, the... Uh, the story, the twist, the resolution was good. Um, I, I enjoyed, I got to watch it one and a half times. Um, I haven't got to see it two times through, but, uh, the second time I watched it, uh, what I got to see more of, I enjoyed it more the second time around as well. So. Yeah. I think because certain twists, um, I was like, oh, and then the second time, I will say the when I watched it, um, Brian and I were watching it, and the kids kept interrupting. Yeah, and yeah. The first time I got to watch it was fragmented as well. So, and I'll just throw this up there. Rotten Tomatoes has this as the tomato meter, which I'm not a huge Rotten Tomatoes fan, but I always throw it up there. Good IMDb, seventy percent on the tomato meter, seventy six percent for the audience. Um. Yeah, it's still on the better the better end. Oh yeah, it's on the better end for both of them. So I just so we watched it just recently, as recently as ten minutes before we recorded this, we finished it. Um, and we watched it as a family, and the kids really enjoyed it. They really got into it and were paying attention. Sayla even ran to her room and came back with her red tennis shoes and her flash mask. <laughs> Excellent. Um. Jania got into it, enjoyed it. I have a couple comments and notes in my notes from her to add to our conversation. So it just, it was good to kind of just watch a DC film um, that was new as a family, you know? Um, and I'll, I'll put in a couple parts in as we go through and talk about it that the kids were both like, ah, oh, ah, oh, you know? <laughs> And it was, right. just, it was exciting you just to have that energy. Yeah. Um, you know, I, so far with these movies, um, the two that have come out and Long Halloween coming out next uh, with the same animation style. That's the – I was going to bring that up at the end. Um, <laughs> you, we can put a pin in that until later. But you know, just the, uh, the animation style itself um, – some people are are down with it. Some people are okay with it, and some people just flat out hate it. And uh, they just think the movies are completely garbage just because they don't like the animation style. And I mean, it was jarring to see these characters in this style because, um, I mean, the only thing close to it I think that come out previously was probably New Frontier. Um, 
I was yeah. Just 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 with this, you know, art style and like lines and colors, but you know, this is obviously newer and updated and and digital, but this is the only one that could compare to it, but it wasn't trying to be it either. So this art style is not for um everybody is is like it's jarring to kind of see these characters in this way when we are so used to seeing them done in more um in ways that the animation still resembled the comics more well it's like i you know it's kind of like it's hard for me to watch the flashpoint paradox because some of the animation in that i don't like the way it looks mm. like aquaman and superman i think like when he first shows up at the beginning is that yeah I think yeah, so. yeah. Um, is they really, look they look a little funny there, and then and then the uh, Flashpoint Aquaman looks kind of crazy in some some animation uh, in in okay. some spots of the film. And even in the continuity films, if you were to watch um, Justice League War and watch Apocalypse War, there's soft changes. Even though it's supposed to be the same continuity and animation style, there's been some soft changes. This new tone just feels more hopeful. Like it feels just like it's brighter. Uh, uh, so, right, it's nice. So something we were, I don't know if I don't know if I want to say wrong about. I mean, just some. I wouldn't say wrong just because we were guessing that it would be. And it would be kind of cool if it was, mm-hmm. was the, uh, it being the same flash coming from like dark side war, like from like when he kickstarted the, the new universe, um, that's not the case. Um, they, they don't make any kind of reference to that whatsoever. Um, so this is a, uh, new, f- new flash in a in a new story mm-hmm. and it's awesome to see uh man of tomorrow superman continuing uh into a, into another film like like starting to starting to build something and taking their time with it i believe it is it is very nice to just have like a new concept because i mean we <clears throat> all love i don't mind one offs but we Really, all love a good continuity. Oh yeah, the the storytelling uh, possibilities um, really really become uh, nearly limitless when you can bring people together. Like they can have their own separate stories, and then they can also have team stories, team up stories, and it really helps to build and flush out characters and. <clears throat> I mean that's why like that's why the Marvel Cinematic Universe has worked so well. Um, the the almost episodic way the movies come out, mm-hmm. like it's a, a cinematic television show almost. <laughs> I mean that's what it is. Huh. Yeah. But let's get into it. Um, but we've we've got a Flash movie, which we never got a Flash centric movie. I mean, except for if you want to call uh, Flashpoint the Flash centric movie in the new con- in the last continuity. I uh, didn't, but the director did. He had a conversation with her. Uh, I just said I really enjoyed it. I just, I just, you know, I mean, even this is it's Flash centric, but he's not the only character like hero. Still had other. Uh, we get into. So let's 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 actually get in to what went on. Word. Well, yes. Word. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I like using ninety slang, and there's nothing funnier talking. And to the two thousands uh, was Little John. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cracking up. My my voice was cracking. I really messed that up. Don't well, judge me. <laughs> when my kids, when we're watching something, and my kids looking like, Daddy, that was dope. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. So, <clears throat> the movie starts out like clip reel, and 
I was going to ask you, like, how is you, we've had a little bit of this conversation, like DC kind of existing in like real world history, because we have FDR being basically briefed by Steve Trevor of what's going on. And one of the clips of just things they're showing the Nazis doing that I wrote down was both of the film The Spirit Destiny. Right. Did you catch that? Yeah. And it looked pretty close to the um, the drawing of it looked pretty close to the uh, look of the Spear of Destiny prop from Constantine with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, it did. That's what it reminded me of. So I was like, oh, all right. Okay. And so we get Steve Trevor talking to FDR and introduces Wonder Woman as the team, this team's leader. And he kind of goes down the roster. And <clears throat> it's really interesting. Because then it cuts and we have Barry Allen with Iris, who is now in animation, an African-American. Uh, so now I have to do change the comic. I'll be all caught up. So that's getting kind of, I think, more and more solidified as being the norm for the yeah. character. And they're in Metropolis on a picnic. And he says, it will see Superman. Which I thought was kind of interesting. That right there told me that uh, this world, they have yet to meet or interact with it. I was like, ah, okay. So, you know, this is, this is important, you know? And so Iris and, them are, and him are talking. And what got, okay, what kind of threw me was Iris says to him, kind of angrily, she says, is this a flame to you? And he goes, no. And then she says, we've been together for years. And I'm just like, hold on. Hold on, bro. Right. You guys have been there a for fling. years. A fling doesn't typically last for years. Right. And that's when I was like, something isn't right. Right. Okay. A fling is measured in like days and weeks yeah like you know like maybe a, maybe months you know and maybe a year maybe this is like the end of a year conversation of hey you know we, we've been doing this too long. um right and you're like yeah you know that, that would make sense but years but anyways so that is completely you know for me i was like man what's going on but um we see that Superman is having a battle with Brainiac. And that was cool because what you said, I was super excited because there's Superman from uh, the Man of Tomorrow. So right there proved what we had hoped for. There's yeah, same voice actor, same costume, same look of the character. So... Um, it's kind of interesting, though, him having one of his huge villains being the the beginning and end, the bookend of this of this movie. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Because that was that was my thought it was it wasn't like he was fighting like inner gang or like a Lobo or you know, a Metallo or. Yeah. Something somebody. Like, somebody. Yeah. Something like that where you're like, man, OK, cool. He was fighting Brainiac. So they must have been like, all right, guys, we're just going to take Brainiac off the table. We're done. Well, are they taking Brainiac off the table or just, like, giving you a taste of Brainiac? Because we know that Brainiac doesn't stop. Brainiac doesn't end. He's always got um, preparations for for any outcome, for any any. Win or loss. It's true. It's all true. It was just, it was shocking. Thrilling. 
Yeah. And, you know, he has a quick interaction. Uh, Brainiac gets super pinned and Flash is basically like, how can I help? And he's, you can do this. And Flash takes off. Uh, Brainiac gets a kryptonite bullet. And Flash takes off after. And then do this really cool, like, way they do it. He goes to get it, but Flash enters the speed port. And ends up in World War II. And it's kind of, like, exciting and thrilling. He's, like, even says, wait, where am I? And I don't know, like, it's yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know where he is right away. And I mean, as soon as he, as soon as he disappears, and the colorful light show is done, because the inside of the Speed Force looked freaking awesome. And we saw Doctor Fate. Um, Speed Force. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, we did see Doctor Fate telling him to follow his voice. Um, so he he ran towards Doctor Fate, and uh, uh, then the next thing we get is a scene in war torn France where the Germans are uh, attacking this village, and 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 we get uh, the JSA, Wonder Woman, and uh, a couple of them. I don't think everybody shows up. I think it's just Wonder Woman, and then the Flash comes out of the Speed Force um, there, and Wonder Woman takes him for an enemy. Um, Black Canary shows up. Um, well, you know, this Wonder Woman, she is very... Um, uh, she's very gung ho. She's she's very badass. She <laughs> um, she's incredibly strong. She's incredibly powerful. Um, the things she does in this movie, like like she is she's number one. You know, um, she knew you really liked this Wonder Woman. She really I liked did too. Her her look. She loved the design on her shield. She loved her voice. She said she should have a exotic, different type of voice. And yeah. the only thing she said she didn't like was that um, her boots were more like heels. But she's like, I get it because of the time. She's like, I just don't. Mm, right. And I was like, well, then we get Dinah Lance showing up. We get Black Canary. Once again, and, Jenny liked uh, her a lot. Did not like her pirate boots. No. <laughs> um, I, I did like her character. She kind of had the black leather. She had like gray pants as opposed to fishnets. Yeah. And she had an old school domino mask. I like that. It was really cool. Uh, and uh, she's there to guard Flash and Flash hears people in trouble. She tells him they're in France. Um, he runs off and he saves people um, in a really awesome action sequence. Oh man, it is where, totally awesome. Because yeah, it's if you pay attention, um, he, like, basically maneuvers everyone so that they're not hurt. Like, even the, the, the Nazis and stuff um, are not hurt. Like, so when it's over, they're, like, everyone just goes down. No one gets hit by the bullets. Yeah. And, and he really does a, um, because of how fast he's going... Um, a minimal effort is required um, because of the transfer of energy uh, uh, from how fast he's going. So he just has to touch him. Like, he just touches him against the head. Like, the last guy, before everything happens in an instant, um, he, he punches at. He doesn't even hit, but just the inertia through the air, the energy transfer through the air from his fist. Sends the guy flying headfirst into a, into a brick wall, um, and might I add, like this is World War Two, and and these people, Wonder Woman kills a lot of these guys and brutally breaks legs mm. and and limbs. Like she she kicks some serious butt. Um, but uh, the thing I thought was really awesome about the the action sequence there was like last action sequence we saw flash against a whole bunch of bullets was flashpoint and like the bullets are out there but like the flash is going so fast that nearly everything is 
frozen in place mm. when he's doing what he's doing. But in this one, when he moves, like he's not moving at top speed where everything's frozen in place, but everything is actually still moving at a much reduced rate. So when he closes in and he and they're firing at him, like he still actually has to pull a dodge and move out of the way because the guys, they're still firing and the bullets are still coming at him. And so like he actually has to maneuver around the bullets. You see them actually moving and like he actually has to make actual turns and stuff while it's all happening. It's awesome. Yeah, unlike I said, most of the time we get super speed, most things are frozen in place. Everything was on the move in that sequence. It was really awesome. I really enjoyed the way the Flash was depicted. I'm just going to say, I love that. Yeah. Oh, incre incredibly smart. When Steve Trevor's plane is going down, the the wingspan, the trajectory, the speed, the, or the velocity, whatever. He's like, he's not going to make it. Like, <laughs> yeah, and he takes off. Like, and, and, and that's, that's what just... the Flash should be. We haven't seen that from the Flash, especially with the show. Well, I think I think because of the show, I think what they because of the nature of the show, they they minimize our heroes because they have to give certain things to our side characters. So instead of giving Barry the intelligence he should have, they make Cisco more intelligent to give him yeah. someone to bounce or Harrison. Right. Him. Because, I mean, when they did the episodes, I really loved, this is spoilers maybe, where he was having his speed brain or whatever. I mean, that's how the Flash should be. Like, but we digress. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he bounces back and forth with people, but everything is on his team to do. Um you know when when he when Barry is a he is a genius level intellect uh, uh, and and Batman considers one of the best detectives one of the best CSIs on the planet. So, uh, yes, sorry, I was gonna say <laughs> you're talking about Barry being smart. Like, do you notice that he does the one thing to save Steve Trevor, but Jay learns from him. And throughout, yeah, throughout they, this movie, they, they both learn from, actually like, yeah, they both learn from each other. Because one, Barry learns that he can face through objects, and he says, "What have I been doing all these years?" And I'm like, "Years right. once again, what are you doing?" And then he learns the speed force. So I guess Barry had never tapped into the speed force till this. Yeah, know. it seems that way. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting is they uh, say yeah, when, he, he he teaches him the uh, the wind trick. Um, he teaches him how to uh, build up electricity when he jump jump starts the submarine, mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's really cool because Jay uses those techniques. Like he uses the air with Barry, he uses the air inside of the uh, the big um, hall where he where he does some fighting in there. Um, and and then uh, he uses the electricity trick when they say, "Can you jumpstart the, the the submarine again?" And uh, um, yeah, he teaches Barry how to phase through. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. I I like that they don't they're not sure what to call him. They call him Future Boy. And yeah, uh, I'm the Flash. Uh, we already got one of those. How about Future Boy? <laughs> Now, I do think it's interesting how they set up that basically Steve proposes to Diana and it's kind of a constant thing where he's trying to like every day kind of propose to her to say yes. And she's like, oh, she'll say yes one of these days. And it's kind of sweet because he's like, isn't that kind of a stalker? <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. She said she would. Just... And then he's like, are they always like this? Yes. Yeah. It's funny, though, how the a couple of words are a couple of words as what would what we consider them today are is not what people would have considered those words to mean in in World War II. Oh, yeah. So a couple of exchanges are like they don't understand what Flash is saying just because of, you know, like, quote unquote, modern uh, slang. Mm hmm. 
He says, so. He says, oh, cool. He says, ooh, that's nifty. Yeah. Um, he says that, and uh, oh, what was the other thing he said? Oh, damn it. Now I'm blanking on the other thing he said. There was a second exchange I knew of. There was. And because I was like, oh, yeah. I, I was like, actually I thinking. Yeah, I was thinking of it, and then you brought up the cool one, and then it just popped out of my head. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> You're like, You'll see it when you watch it, listener. Trust yeah. me. It's really cool. <laughs> uh, it's going to bug us. We'll, we'll figure it out as soon as we're done recording. Yeah, well, I'll just punch it in like, it's blah. <laughs> back, yeah. back to you, Ollie. It's going to rain. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's really funny because, like you said, Jenny and I were talking about this the other day of just words that we use, but then, you know, a century ago or a generation or two ago, we're completely different. And you're like, huh? Like, even like I said, slang words. Like, my, I like to bring back 90s slang. And I'll say, that's dope. People look at me like, what? Unless they're, you know, cool like us. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed that they had the earpieces. Now, like, tap them in Morse code. <laughs> right? Yeah. That was interesting. Um, interesting technology they had. Uh, so, they get this code. Um, they intercept this code. And they have to... And, and they don't know how to figure it out. So, they go to... A place, they go to a castle, uh, a fortress, where uh, a code breaker, a mystic, is being held. Yeah, this is, I think, the Um, part that gets a little confusing is they have these coordinates, and the code breaker will be found as Dr. Fate. And Dr. Fate, um, and this is where it gets a little confusing. And I wonder if it's going to pay off in another thing, but I don't think so, because... We have a kid, and I, I, I kind of look like Command. That's why I put my notes. This Commandy um, says, he said you would come, and he hands Shakespeare, who's this reporter who's on the ground with the team, you know, kind of spitting the story so that nobody knows that they're actually in World War to the superheroes. Because Barry even says, like, this is the past, and I've never heard of you guys. And we find out that that, that Shakespeare is actually super. Clark. And yeah, he gets he gets shot and and the bullet just you know obviously crunches on his skin. Uh and the and big yeah. thing is I thought, okay, did Superman get pulled into the time with Flash and maybe he arrived earlier? And because he didn't have the speed force, he forgot who he was. Um but we have another twist here, and this is this is the one I don't, at first I was like, hmm, I don't know if I like that. Um, but what is that big twist? Um, well, he's Clark Kent, and he reveals that he's been on, he was on Earth, and uh, he knows he's from another planet, um, so we don't know anything about what he knows, um, but he's on Earth, he's from another planet, and uh, he, uh, his parents who adopted him, Jonathan and Martha Kent died when he was three and he was shipped off to an orphanage. Um, so Superman's life, the life he had, he, it c- turns out that flash through the speed force went to another earth, not the past. And that's when I was like, ah, oh, okay. Because like this whole time I was thinking like, He's in the past, and what will happen is he'll come back in the future. And then at the end of the movies, he'll find Wonder Woman now in his present day. Right. That's what I, men, remember him, maybe call him Future Boy or something. Right. And it would be like, okay, so Flash and Superman and now Wonder Woman are starting this justice. Yeah. You know, but no, uh, it's, it's an alternate Earth, which kind of sucks because I really liked this Wonder Woman. And... I'm like, man, we're we're not really going to get this Wonder Woman now. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting if they actually bring the same woman back to voice a Wonder Woman on, like, Barry and, and Clark's Earth, our, our prime so-called Earth, mm-hmm. um, for the animated continuity. And 
and just got to play her a little different, you know, because she's not in the 1940s and she's on this world, this, this time, what has she been up to in this time? Um, so that, that would be interesting to see. Uh, but, uh, so what I actually heard, cause I haven't watched it yet. The commandy short, it's actually, there's a, a DC, um, I saw the showcase. Show. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. Uh, I have not watched it. It's Commandy Showcase. And in, I heard in that short, he is tasked with going in the past to Superman. Mm. So the idea, I think, is that actually that is Commandy going to Superman. Okay. So I was like, oh, um, so yeah, the short actually connects, uh, is what I heard. I haven't, I haven't watched it. Um, but yeah, so Flash finds out there on another Earth, and Dr. Fate gives him the code, and it's the Bermuda Triangle, um, but he's also, they called him crazy, yeah. he's a lunatic, he's a psychotic, um, and obviously he seems that way uh the the castle the fortress it's pretty messed up i mean there's there's dead bodies in cells uh they had the young boy chained up who uh, appears to be commandy this is the um, darkest part of the movie yeah and and dr fate he's chained up he's he's strapped to a chair and he's got like bloody scars on his body um like he's he's been tortured um, but he's also like talking, he's saying things, he's like having a conversation with himself. We know that he's like conversing with Naboo um, in his head because uh, putting on the helm in different uh, uh, different continuities mm-hmm. makes the wearer crazy because of the, the knowledge that Naboo possesses. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, he's arguing with Naboo, and he's like, no, I will not tell him about the League. And, um, like, he knows Flash is from another Earth. And, and and that actually gives Flash the idea when he goes back later to talk to Superman about teaming up. Yeah, and it's, I love, I mean, to kind of jump ahead, I love that it's Superman and Flash. Stop. Oh, absolutely. Like, that's, like, the two biggest hearts. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, on the League to begin with. Because Flash even so says... You, like, you know that the League is coming from a good place if Flash and Superman are its, like, two founders, two main founders. And, you know, he even says... Uh, he, when he meets, you know, Shakespeare, Clark Kent... Superman on this earth said, you're the most selfless person I know. Like, and it's just, he's like, yeah, this is a different earth. We also learned that the speed force, and this is what I, I put in my notes is interesting, that the speed force, when there's two speedsters, they can't both be pulling from the speed force. It, it like depowers one of them. And I'm like, is that because we're on a different earth? Because that would be very interesting when we get, like, say, Kid Flash. Or any of the other speedsters on the main Earth with Barry about how the speed force right. can fluctuate if they go that route. Now, this is the part. Okay, so after this, they get in the submarine, and it's really cool. And this is the part where I feel like the movie kind of changes, and it's a little jarring at first because you know it's World War Two. I want to see them fighting Nazi. Yeah, ground level troops, that kind of stuff. And like, and we 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 lose the Nazis. Okay, we lose the World War II element here because they go to the Reunion Triangle and they go to Atlantis. We see Atlantean soldiers. Um, we have a great scene of Diana getting shot up with a torpedo tube and fighting in water. Yeah, that's uh, pretty awesome. And. The Atlantean soldiers look like Mr. Freeze. I don't know why, but that's just what I thought of first time I looked at them. Yeah, they're blue with red eyes, and they have glass domes. Like, why are Atlanteans wearing underwater suits? And um, 
So it was just, you know, we meet Aquaman, King Arthur of Atlantis. So I was like, okay, that's interesting too, I guess, you know, because we know like in normal times table, Wonder Woman's like immortal. She, her age is different. But having Arthur as himself and now Superman, it's like we're making our way for this error's Justice League. You know, this Earth 2 now that we know it's Earth 2. Um, and so he has this advisor. Did you figure out who the advisor is? No. I think it's Psycho Pirate. It was, it was something that, like, Brian and I talked about um, messaging and stuff. And he said he saw I... it somewhere. Because he, also, I thought it was maybe Felix Faust. Um, because it's just listed as advisor. And really? at the end, there's a quick line where he says he just disappears. So I feel like that's going to be maybe an ongoing thing. Um. And I just thought that was interesting because he has Arthur under a sp- – he's controlling Arthur. Arthur. Well, he's psychic. Um, basically, you know, locks he controls our their mind. heroes up. And Atlantis now is going to attack the surface world because they're in league with Hitler. Arthur says, I hit. And I was like, okay. But that's what just got me darn is because there's not even any Nazis. There's no, like – Nazis in Atlantis or nothing. It just, it just. That changes. guy is a Nazi, and he's using his powers to, um, to further, um, or, or to try and win the war right. using using Atlantis Atlantean technology. Um. So. It was just one of those, like, huh. Yeah, like I said, it just feels... It feels kind of jarred. Because um, now we go... Yeah. It's, I mean, the, the final part, they're basically at New York trying to stop the Atlantean invasion. The action is amazing. Um, we have some great great scenes some cool creature designs um um let's see. Got, uh, like a flying almost bat ray shark. type creature I call it the bat yeah shark. bat shark there's a um very vicious uh crab yep. uh crustacean creature and then basically the carafin <laughs> yep that's where solomon lost his stuff he loved it. yeah um, <laughs> And we, I mean, we have some great action scenes. Steve Trevor has some great quips about, he's like, join the war, fight in a submarine, fall in love with an Amazon princess, fight people uh, from under the water, meet a person creature. Steve Trevor, never say you're ever bored again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and one person we haven't really talked much about is Hawkman. I really like this Hawk. The voice actor is great. His story arc, and he's kind of a, vo- a, a voice of reason and conscience, and especially to and intelligence. Black Canary, who like she's Calm. very closed off, and he gets stabbed by the bat chart and dies. And like his final words, is him calling out to Shira, and then after that, Black Canary loses her jump, man. Like she goes off and shows how powerful she is. And she does one scream that blows the water out of the bay. And he's like, she blow the water away? I'm like, yes. Well, and then, and then what, what does she do to the bat shark? Um, she strips it of its skin, its muscle, and turns it to dust. Yeah, yeah. She, her scream literally, like, rips the flesh off of its bones and then shatters its bones to dust. Um. So Wonder Woman is battling Aquaman in an amazing battle. I mean, that is just the animation's great. The battle is awesome, and they're fist fighting, and it is just good. Um, oh yeah, the hand to hand combat that they had against each other was so cool. That's worth watching. Um, and so Wonder Woman kind of gets knocked down, and Steve's like, "I got to help her." And I wrote in my notes here, um. Steve ghost rides his whip. 
<laughs> I guess my cousin used to listen to this song all the time about ghost riding the whip. And I was like, what? Uh, hilarious. He's like, you, he's like, you know how you used to ghost ride your bike where you ride it and jump off and just let it go? And I'm like, oh, my God. And that's what he does. He just shoots yeah. a car. At, he takes out Aquaman. And um, Wonder Woman's down and Steve picks up a gun. He's like, don't worry, darling. I got this. And he starts shooting Aquaman. And he's like, who are you that would stop him? Belong like Aquaman, generally like something about the business of God. Or so, no, it's something he goes. Steve Trevor, Colonel of the Army, Wonder Woman, boy. and then Aquaman, like you know, picks up, throws him on the ground, about to stab him with his trident, and that's when he says, "You know, who are you, a, a mere man, with your business part of God's?" And like his trident comes down. This is probably one of my favorite scenes of the whole thing. Is Wonder Woman's bracelet? is right there stop tried it and she's like i have business or you know something like that punch aquaman in the face and then we learn that he can control his trident with telekinesis he's like pulling it towards him and one woman just takes her bracelet and breaks it yeah it's epic yeah it's pretty it's pretty freaking awesome um we have flash running on water oh i forgot to mention one of my favorite parts though is when Barry, like, goes to free uh, the heroes because, like, he fades through the floor, get them out, and he goes up to an Atlantean guard and punches him in the face, like, a gazillion times. I literally would laugh out loud. Really yeah. hard because he's like, Right. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I do like him running on water the way he did because, like, when everything is all said and done, and and uh, he doesn't have to keep running like that. He just stops, and he just sinks into the water, and, like, he's close to shore, so he only, like, sinks down into, like, four feet of water, and he just stands there. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, he just stopped on water and just sank right in. He was like, uh, what just happened? So <laughs> the big thing is we see our heroes think they've, and we see all kinds of, like, Nazi bombers. And the advisor is talking to Steve and basically takes the broken trident and stabs Steve in the back. Yeah, yeah, he comes up behind Steve with the, with the three-pronged end of the trident with the pointy end. And, yeah, stabs him in the back, stabs him through his heart. And it was... His chest. It was intense. And uh, so I'm trying to remember who is it that sees him and he says something, he says, go, to try to stop him. And Diana doesn't see it. Or, and they're all going, just, they see these bombers coming and they're just like, and then boom, there comes Superman. Yeah. And um, it's I, Golden Age Superman. I, yeah, yeah, it's Golden Age Superman, and that's what I love about it, too, is is the story he gave. You know, Golden Age Superman, he was found and dropped off at an orphanage. That's Golden Age so Superman's story. He grew up in an orphanage, and that's the, I mean, that's somewhat of the story he gives. Like, he was found by the Kents, but, I mean, old, old folks, they, they died when he was young and went to an orphanage. I was like, man, that's pretty awesome, giving us Golden Age Superman like that. Yeah. And then he shows up jumping from from ship to ship, from, from bomber to bomber. So he's um, not flying. Blowing him up. That, that's the thing that point. He's not flying. Not that I noticed. I'd have to look again. Like it I said, like I he's, didn't he's get... Jumped. He's Because he even jumps off the ship and comes down. Like yeah, he, he does jump. I I did see that for sure, but I can't remember if he like came down and up or or what he was doing. But even still, I mean that's just Fleischer. Like mm -hmm. sometimes he kind of flew, sometimes he didn't. <laughs> I just kind of wish they would have done a different symbol for his costume, like done maybe more of a golden age alternate style chest symbol. To really just kind of help distinguish him, um, and I looked it up. Yeah, that the advisor was psycho. Pirate. So we will see where psycho pirate leads us. Um, so 
the harsh part is Superman joins in. He talks about not sitting on the sidelines, getting in the game. And then we hear our man yell, and Diana goes over and sees Steve. And she's, like, basically admitting that she thought when the war was over they could be together. And she's mad for, you know, never really, uh, you know, agreeing to a Steve's marriage proposal or anything. And he's like, we grant a dying man the last wish. And he goes to put the ring on her finger. She nods her head and he dies before he can. And it, I mean, it was... It was intense because, like, I got a little teary-eyed and you got teary-eyed, you know? And the kids were like, no, not Steve. Right. You know? And I'm like, dang. And, you know, she... And what I like is she gives Barry her her engagement ring that Steve had for her and basically says, you agree with me on why I never told Steve yet, but basically don't waste time. Yeah. So, Barry, you know, to the Speed Force, goes back, saves Superman. Um, and that's why there's that really weird scene of how he's running. He goes to save Superman earlier. And it's him coming back, runs into himself. And yeah, it's kind of interesting. It happens, like, so fast. Like, Barry comes from the other side of Superman, slides underneath him in the car... And and stands up and catches the the kryptonite bullet and spins it around and throws it straight through the head of Brainiac. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's like it's really cool because it happened so fast. It's like like you thought like it was the moment that Barry grabbed the kryptonite bullet. Mm-hmm. Um that he entered the speed force, but it's like actually like that, that very instant, that very fraction of a second, whatever, um, that he went to grab it, that he entered into the speed force. So at that exact same moment was the time it got caught out of the air from the time he disappeared. And then that's when he saved Superman. They talked about, you know, we should team up because there's going to be threats. I like that though. Superman was like, wait, you were, how, how did you, like, cause yeah. he came from the other side of him. He's like, you were just over. He's like, yeah, I know, man. What up? It's like, um, and I love it. They shake hands and it's an epic scene. And then the, the final scene is, um, Barry talking to Iris and he poses and she says, yes. And that's where it ends. There's no post credit scene. I watched just to see. Um, and so now, if we think about it, we've been introduced to Superman, the Flash, Martian Manhunter, and we were teased back. Because if you think about that scene in Man of Tomorrow where they kind of tease Batman. Yeah, talk about his cool cape. Um, or, or write his cool cape on the, on the photo. So, yeah. I... You know, I think we, we could go more in detail and stuff, and sometimes we do, but I really like well, this movie. Yeah. Well, what's going to be kind of cool is we got this, I mean, if if we got Batman Long Halloween um, Part 1 and Part 2 coming out, and it's the same animation style, if it's in the same continuity, um, this is Batman Year 2. Like, Long Halloween is Year 2 in his career. He's still He's still just starting. Um, so that means like Superman just started. He's not very far along. Batman's not very far along. The Flash hasn't is not that very far along. You know what I mean? Yeah, they they're all within the first couple of years, and I, I like that about you know, and I like that we're gonna get new continuity because I just like we said we enjoy these characters and enjoy these characters together, and it were it'll be nice to see. So Absolutely. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it more. And I think if I go back and watch it again, I'll enjoy it even more. And I think just, I think what got me was just the, the jarringness of when Atlanta shows up feeling like I'm being taken out mm. of the movie I thought I was watching. And right. Well, I'm looking forward to um, uh, 
picking up this physical uh, copy tomorrow and uh, watching it again and checking out that Commandy short, seeing how it fits. Yeah, we all know that we sit around and uh, can't wait. Man. I know, right? That's, that's James' favorite character. He's like, Commandy, what's up, bro? <laughs> um, but... <laughs> The last man on earth. <laughs> so, so, anyways, everybody, check out Justice Society World War II, newest DC film. Um, shoot us a message online. Let us know what you think. If you enjoyed it, keep us up to date and be looking out for our digital giveaway. Remember, James is blue of the moon. <laughs>